Alright guys, welcome to the Mountain Man Initiative where we are going to straight pipe this mess and raise it higher. And we're going to delete the EGR as well. Part of the smog delete as well that we're doing today. Straight pipe, EGR delete, and smog you know, system delete is what we're doing. So with that being said, let's get cracking. And we're going to get cracking by taking off this air filter first. Then we're going to do the EGR valve, get that out of the way because I think it's causing some other troubles I am experiencing. And we're going to make a custom plate with that and we'll be going. Alright guys, pop this guy off, pop this hose off back here, do this. I like to put that there so I don't lose it. Grab that vacuum hose off and set this to the side. And now we're here. So what we're going to end up doing next is taking these springs off so we can get them out of our way. And this is our EGR valve that we're going to take and plug the vacuum line on. Alright, so what we're going to end up doing here is starting with this again. Get this guy off like so. We can have them just sitting right there and we can have that one just sitting over there. Now it's out of our way. So I was playing with this earlier. Yeah, this broke on me. That's old plastic. What happens when it dries out? And we got like this electrical tape here that runs. Oh, I guess it's coming undone for us. And that plugs into the EGR valve right here. So what we're going to end up doing is pulling this off this deal and just plugging it here because I don't know where that line runs to and I don't feel like dissecting the engine just yet so that's what we're gonna do and then for this EGR valve to come off all the way is we got a bolt here and a bolt on the other side that we're gonna get and that's how we're gonna get that off and once we get that off we'll use it to draw a stencil and then we'll cut it out of our sheet metal we got today so now we're gonna unplug the air idle control valve so that hose the little wires out of our way and we're gonna just unplug this however it decides to come undone by there it goes all right man i bet that's been on there for ages or from the factory being 31 years old well i don't want to damage that just in case so we'll leave it as such all right guys we have another vacuum line we're gonna have the cap as well it's this one right here it connects to the top of your smog pump like so and it runs all the way through here and ends up connecting to your throttle body right here it's this guy and so we're gonna end up taking that off and capping it and then we'll probably rip this guy out too because this one just backs over and is capped for whatever reason for me so that way it's just less garbage on the engine so we're gonna go ahead and do that now Oh, that blue one fits on there perfectly. Good deal. And we'll just be able to pull that out. And our vacuum line stuff is done. Alright guys, so I did a little bit of fiddling. And it's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt for the EGR valve right here for it to come off. So, And this thing has been on here for the factory. So we'll find out what... Oh, wow, that was easy. I was going to say how tight it is. So that means I get to reuse these. Hooray. Damn. Well, I don't know. Maybe I lied. There it goes. Damn, that was on there. Your experience may vary. <laughs> Okay, that's unique. Huh, well, I find this interesting. We got that there, hole there, that there. Huh. So, I guess what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to clean this up a little bit. I uh, got some sandpaper and stuff I'm going to hit that with. And from there, we'll make our new one. 
All right, man, I've never even vacuumed the top of the engine yet. And now it's the first time it's gonna get some. So we're gonna vacuum that up, sand it, vacuum, sand it, vacuum. So that way we try not to get any of that stuff in there. So I think that will do. I plan on replacing the Centake manifold later, so I'm not going to be too picky on it. Just enough to help it out. Alright guys, with all my junk here, we're going to start with this plate, draw our stencil off of this, and make ourselves a good all new plate or blocking plate and we'll be good to go. I'm using good old 16 gauge, um, if it doesn't seem like it's enough. I'll double up and make two of them, which is good, so we'll do that. I think this will be fine. It won't be the most stable, but it'll get it done, because we're going to finish it up in the vise anyways. So get our death adder here as I called it because this thing shakes like I'm like all hell That's a lot better piece. Now we can actually shape that. Oh, I guess this one threads on here. That's it. Um, neat, I guess. I haven't used one of these before, so we'll see if it comes off and kills me. Like the other one tried breaking and exploding on me. Got me pretty good, but nothing that takes me to the ER stitches. So let's see how this fits together now. Uh, <laughs> this just looks so awful. Eh, well, I'm gonna have to open up one of these holes a little bit. Uh, not enough. Okay, after much trial and error, because I was using the old hardware, we are going to use this contraption. So 16 gauge piece here, two giant washers, smaller washers and a crush washer. And this is what we're gonna put in there to plug it temporarily. Later I'll get some bar stock and actually make one, make one. 
but like I said this is all supposed to be temporary and get my truck running better because I'm not sure why it's acting up. The forms are telling me EGR valve if it wasn't there idle control valve so that's what we're doing hoping this fixes this problem. So let me get that RTV and make a gasket and we'll be good to go. All right, goop in hand, let's start our bead and get this thing on here. All right, since that's done, that's supposed to sit for an hour starting now. And then from there, we could crank it all the way down. So we'll leave that going and we'll get started on the rest of this project today. All right guys, since this monstrosity is now on here that I have fabricated, it's been so long since I've even done fab work, I almost forgot. So sorry in advance for the ugly horror story it is. It's supposed to do one thing and one thing only and to delete the EGR valve. One reason why I'm rolling it into this video is because it pertains to the smog delete. So, um, you know, and straight piping. It's just a part of the deal you could do. You might as well do it while you're here, you know, yanking off this hose, which we're about to do, and this one and plugging it. So that's what we're going to start doing now by getting these hoses, getting them out of our way. Then we're going to chop up the exhaust off in several sections so that way I could salvage the new stuff I put on since I own the vehicle and get it all situated. So let's start by doing this all now. With a handy pan dandy pair of pliers, go ahead and get these constant pressure clips off and not drop your pliers into the engine bay. All right, so that part's done for this little hose. We'll just go ahead and yank it off. And that one, that comes off. Now we're going to go ahead and do it to this other one. And if y'all have not seen the previous video on about the overview and layout of this, you need to go check it out because I actually run through how this thing's all kind of plumbed and where the hoses go. So y'all need to go do that if y'all haven't. With that being said, I do make a note in that video that having this pump here, I'm going to leave it because the belt's squealing because I think it was pulley alignment. Well, the forms, we're talking about how it's probably not a pulley alignment, it's something else. It shouldn't be squeaking, but I'm going to leave it there until I find out what's squeaking or causing the squeak. Um, one recommendation was probably just being a POS belt, but I'm not sure yet. So until I try that out, I'm going to leave it on there because I'd much rather not have it squealing and, you know, and worry about a belt blowing. So... Just a heads up guys. Actually, let's try going the other way with it. Since I didn't want to go the other way. Good heavens, this is in there. Looks like it's getting caught on this constant pressure clip. Guess I need to take it off then. Thought there was enough room there for it. No. There we go. We'll go ahead and put this constant pressure clip back on so we don't lose it. So if I move to a state that's all smog everything, I have my stuff. There we go. Set that, grab this, and set it here with our other stuff. All right, so that's done. 
Now I'm going to go get a plug I have that's a high temp plug and we're just going to plug it right here on this check valve because I'm not going to do that back half until I get the uh, new headers whenever I do that. Alright guys, well I used to do Cerakote and these are high temp plugs that I ran 300, 400 degrees in the oven before and they're high temp rated. So that's what we're going to use here. I think it'll be perfectly fine. Um, it'll make life a lot easier. Alright, well that's there. Plug problem is done. Alright guys, since the hoses are now gone, we got it plugged right here at that check valve. What I'm going to do is leave this pump on here like I mentioned. So I'll figure out why my belts are squeaking. So it's just going to hold on tight for now. Um, and then when I do the headers, you know, this guy will come out and I'll show you how to do that. But this is only pertaining to if you wanted to go ahead and straight pipe it now. Oh, the death adder, adder struck again. Well, damn. <laughs> All right, guys, when I was cutting the old stuff off and finishing it off, um, my camera crapped out on me. Don't know why it did, but it's working now. So I finished cutting all that crap off and this is what we're going to do now um so we're putting that 18 inch pipe and that 18 inch pipe in to to fix it and then where the old cat is the my current muffler is going to go straight into there um right where the heat shielding is so i could get it higher off the ground because as y'all saw that was just way too damn low so that's what we're going to do now so Without further ado, I'm gonna get get the clamps. I gotta chop off that bell because they didn't have just a one-ended bell, which would have been nice. But it's gonna make it a bit short, but that's okay. And then we'll get her hung up. On another note, the smog pump pipe—I forgot to mention, and I kind of forgot about it. My apologies. Is that there's that pipe you know that we unplugged that one that snuck through everything, and then it runs down the side of the engine to the cat. Well, that one has two brackets. One's accessible in the engine and one's not. And I'm going to insert some photos here in a second of that. And then there's one that's the same mount that a bolt goes through for the end to the transmission. And also holds your dipstick for your transmission in place. That one was difficult to get to. And I'm in Texas where anything over 25 years is smog exempt. And I don't plan on going anywhere else. So, yeah. So I just said hell with it cut it out or and trim the tube the best I could and just left it where it is with the brackets because I was just having so much trouble trying to get it off I just kind of said hell with it so without further ado now we can actually get started on this alright guys I want to take a moment and say this is I'm sorry that I don't have any more footage to show you for this video of me actually assembling everything the camera crapped out for a second time for some reason I've yet to decide for the real reason why that occurred but it's pretty boring stuff in my opinion um, it's pretty self-explanatory I used some hangers and clamps from AutoZone which are nuts and bolts so I mean that's very easy to do and you kinda use those clamps to crimp the bell that's on the pipe onto the other pipe which helps keep it secure and over time the heat of the exhaust will actually start to kinda semi weld all that together so it's not going to go anywhere along if you tighten the bolts down enough. And then how I hung it is I used those hangers, universal hangers, with um, bailing wire. And that's how I finished adjusting everything um, to, get it to, to get it to hang upright and get it tight and stuff like that. But as you can see here in the footage that you're seeing now, it looks hell of a lot better. Um, you know, just thank you for checking out and being a part of the rest of this how I pulled apart all the hoses, you know, the vacuum lines, um, all that stuff. I hope it's helpful. Like, comment, subscribe, you know, tell everybody that you know who's a gearhead who likes this kind of stuff or is looking to do it. It's an intro to everything. Um, 
when you get to the fuel injection systems and EFI, they're completely different than this. This is more pertaining to CARB and the actual TBI, not EFI systems. Because um, you got a bunch of other sensors and stuff you're going to have to worry about. Other than that, have a good one.